Hello, and what we're going to try to do today, or what I'm going to try to do today, is explain uh, plate boundaries for the whole idea of plate tectonics. Um, this whole idea was formed uh, probably in the 20th century for the most part uh, with Alfred Wagner back in the 1920s, uh, International Geophysical Year, the 19, late 1950s, um, all the post uh, World War II submarine uh, hunting uh, information data. Um, which actually took pictures of the ocean floor and what we discovered was the largest mountain range on the planet, the Mid-Ocean Ridge, um, which you can see a small part of it right here. So we're seeing a very small part of a 46,000 mile long mountain range, um, which has a rift valley running through it. Rift actually means to be ripped apart. Um, this is an ocean floor diagram. You can see the ocean sitting on top. Um, this is an oceanic plate moving to the right. This is an oceanic plate moving to the left. Um, we can see this sort of diagram right here, which is going to represent an earthquake. We can sort of see this release of steam, um, which is supposed to be the volcanic eruption. Remember, this is not a, this is not a volcano eruption. This is volcanic. Volcanic is any mo moving rock. We've got moving rock, um, molten rock underneath the earth. We have molten rock hitting the surface, hitting the water and freezing. Um, when we actually look at this ocean floor, we see basically three bands. We see basalt at the top. Um, this is all mafic rock, about 3.0 grams per cubic centimeter, uh, which differentiates between the continental rock, which is about 2.7. This makes up basalt, um, makes up gabbro, the intrusive and extrusive, excuse me, the extrusive and intrusive form, um, where we get rhyolite um, or granite when we talk about continental rock. This tends to be a little bit more dense, and if we take a look at it, we see a basalt layer on the top. We get columbar or columns of basalt, which shows slower cooling underneath. And the very bottom row of this is a uh, gabbro, which is the intrusive form, um, phaneritic, large crystal, um, intrusive form of mafic rock. But anyway, what we get is we get uh, uh, asthenospheric convection, um, which actually moves up towards the top and breaks away to the left, breaks away to the right, and actually pulls these two plates apart. There may be something called slab pull also on the other end, which is pulling it away, but this is probably a push force. It's probably a little bit of both. Um, so this moves over, and what it does, it rips the oceanic crust away, new molten rock forms up to the top, the top part freezes very quickly, extrusive basalt, bottom part very slowly, intrusive gabbro, and then the part in between is the medium, that's the columbar basalt, the columns of basalt. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press play, and what we're going to notice is that these earthquakes are all going to be shallow, and they're all going to be sitting right next to each other um, along this line. Um, they're all going to be shallow depth because this is molten rock, you can't build up the stresses. This is solid rock, you can. So the earthquakes all tend to be rather shallow, right up near the surface of the earth. One way we can tell this is a divergent force, and one way we can tell oceanic crust is thinner than continental. Okay, so that is the divergent boundary. Um, we tend to make oceans with this. If there were like a continent here that started getting pulled apart, um, what we would get is we'd get mafic material forming inside, eventually it would reach up and hit an ocean or a lake, it would fill full of water, and we'd have an inland sea and keep getting larger and larger like what we think we happened at the, um, the form of the Atlantic some 250 million years ago. Then we can go to uh, convergent. Convergent means to come together. You can see we have arrows moving opposite direction just like we did here. These two arrows are moving opposite direction opposite of each other. These are moving in opposite direction toward each other. And then transform, they're moving opposite directions side by side. So it all has to do with plate motions. They're all moving opposite direction. These tend to move closer. Um, two cars colliding, this tends to be a very violent earthquake. Um, we are going to get shallow earthquakes right along this. This would be called a deep ocean trench rather than a spreading center. Um, Rift Valley, um, where we had the divergent, um, this one is actually called a deep ocean trench or uh, an ocean trench. Um, this tend to be the deepest places in the ocean. So even shallow earthquakes located here are farther away from surface than shallow earthquakes or maybe even intermediate earthquakes on dry land. We also get a plate that 
um, is forced down, subducted down. Um, it reaches into the mantle. Uh, the mantle's heat actually starts melting it. We get blobs of molten rock, which really want to be up here at the surface. They start being buoyant, and they start moving up. Some of them will actually um, solidify in the crust. Some will make them way all the way up to the surface and create volcanoes. Um, they're actually called seamounts before they hit the surface. But once they hit the surface, we actually call them volcanic islands. Now what's going to happen is this volcanic island is eventually going to get pushed into this trench and probably rubbed up against this other plate. But what you'll also notice is we'll get intermediate earthquakes and we'll even get deep earthquakes with this one. Um, but they seem to be lined up. The shallow, inter shallow earthquakes are here. Um, the intermediate earthquakes which happen down here will appear as epicenters up here on the surface and the deep earthquakes which appear down here will actually appear this direction so we get deep, intermediate, and shallow earthquakes all with this three-dimensional view. We still get earthquakes looking the same, we get volcanoes with the volcanic eruption looking the same, um, but this is a convective force um, pushing this plate into this plate, um, subducting one of the plate, probably the older and more dense of the oceanic plates takes the dive. The other one gets rubbed away and that material gets moved down as well. Just probably not as fast as this side. So let me push play. You can see the two plates moving toward each other. They're not really moving the volcanoes. Um, it would get rubbed in and eventually they'd work their way in, but this is the one that gets subducted down. Um, let me show you the earthquakes um, while we're there. We do get deep earthquakes, intermediate earthquakes, and shallow earthquakes but shallow, epicentral, will show the intermediate ones here and the deep ones over there. Last one is called a uh, transform fault. Um, it's caused by shearing forces. Um, this one is actually caused by divergent forces being pulled apart. This one convergent forces being pushed together. This one transform faults or shearing moving back and forth um, side to side. Notice that these two plates don't really move toward each other, so we're not getting one subducted down. They don't move away from each other. We're not getting molten rock rising to the surface. We get lots of earthquakes with this plate, but we get very little volcanic activity. Okay, we can get shallow, intermediate, and deep earthquakes depending on the, the depth of the crust, but they appear to be right over the top of each other, or at least very closely associated, where divergent, um, they're all shallow in a line and convergent, we get shallow earthquakes where the two plates are touching, we get intermediate earthquakes and deep earthquakes depending on which plate is being subducted down. Okay, this one uh, can be found in the water, can also be found in dry land. They're showing this one on dry land because they're not really showing you water as they did in the other ones. But basically what we get is we get uh, lots of earthquakes with no volcanism with this type of boundary. And let me push play and you can see this one moving. You can see shallow earthquakes. There should be intermediate and deep earthquakes if the crust is deeper. Um, this is what's called a lateral fault. This is a left lateral fault because the material on the other side of the fault moved to your left. Um, just like if you're sitting on this side, that other side moved to the left. Um, the San Andreas fault would be the exact opposite. It's a right lateral fault. But we have a lithospheric plate sitting on top of a asthenosphere. The asthenosphere is moving, or the plate's moving, and we get this side-to-side -side motion, transform or shearing forces. Okay, and the whole thing plays out in something called plate tectonics, where we get out in the ocean, we get a divergent force with shallow earthquakes. Um, we get convergent forces, and this one we're actually getting continental oceanic convergence rather than oceanic oceanic convergence. This was oceanic oceanic. This one is oceanic continental convergence. The continental plate being a little more um, lighter, less dense, 2.7 grams, um, is more buoyant, stays on the top. The ocean floor being more dense, made out of mafic material, 3.0 grams per cubic centimeter. Not a big difference, but difference nevertheless. It's about a 10% difference. So this one is the one that takes the dive. Um, it actually does take sediment that's been washed off this and in, accumulated in this deep ocean trench. Um, it takes some of that continental material down with it. Most of it is mafic. Um, it does melt just like it did before. This plate will eventually be destroyed completely. Um, but we do get molten rock rising up. Some of this molten rock um, is buoyant. 
and it actually moves up. Um, some not as hot and actually solidifies. Um, the mafic material usually ends up down below and it gets more felsic as we go up. So we can get andesitic volcanoes. Um, andesitic meaning um, you get a little bit of mafic and you get a little bit of felsic. And this one actually is probably some of the strongest, most violent earthquakes. Mount St. Helens, Mount Rainier, Mount Mazamoff, um, which is Crater Lake. Um, the Three Sisters, Mount Shasta, Mount Hood. All those volcanoes on the west coast of the United States are created by this convection force where we have the Juan de Fuca plate being pushed into the North American plate, taking this dive and forming this whole pressure. Okay, sthenospheric convection, pushing the plates apart, divergent, pushing one plate into another because we're on a round surface and anytime I move something away from here and here, um, they got to be moving towards something else on both sides. So we get convective forces there. Um, transform forces, forces are actually caused when we get divergent to this point, divergent to that point, at this one that's actually moving to the right, this side's moving to the left, so they're actually moving side to side from each other. These are really not faulting because they're moving pretty much at the same direction. Um, this is a period over 100,000 years. Let's push play, and you can see divergent shallow earthquakes. You can see convergent with shallow, intermediate, and deep earthquakes. You can see volcanism coming out here. You can see volcanism coming out here. This one tends to be more uh, mafic, um, more gentle eruptions. This one tends to be um, more... Uh, intermediate, where we get mafic and felsic, the most dangerous type, composite cones. And this one, again, where we get the plates rubbing next to each other, no volcanism whatsoever. Shallow earthquakes. Um, on this particular case, shallow earthquakes, but if it's the San Andreas Fault, we get shallow, intermediate, and deep. And here we get shallow, intermediate, and deep, where we actually get them um, shallow, being in some place different than the intermediate, some place different than the deep. Um, for this one, we'd actually get them right on the top of each other. And this one, it's only shallow because of the thickness of the crust. Older as we move this way, and then subject it down. Older as we move this way, and eventually um, it'll reach either a continent, and it's the end of the floor. So you can see rock increasing age this way, rocks increasing age this way. If you looked 100 miles on this side and 100 miles on this side, the rock on both sides would be very similar to age. Um, a lot older than what would be found closer to this uh, mid-ocean ridge or this rift valley, this place of divergence. Um, it eventually hits the convergence. Um, if it hits an oceanic, oceanic convergence, we get what's called an island arc. This would be called a volcanic arc, um, a line of volcanoes, um, arc-shaped. And uh, that should do it. Thank you very much. Okay, today I'm going to try to do uh, something on earthquakes and uh, fault types. Um, if you take a look at the first picture, we'll talk a little bit about fault block anatomy. Um, I like to look at this one first. We've got this beautiful young lady actually cl climbing down a fault. And probably the first way we actually got into the rock looking for gold or silver or platinum or something. Found a crack in the rock and just enlarged it. Um, probably to the detriment of quite a few folks because as you enlarge this rock, uh, the rock that actually is holding it all together, we're um, getting on either side of it and uh, we're allowing it to um, probably move, causing earthquakes, landslides, uh, cave-ins, um, other things. But anyway, get back to this lovely young lady. If you take a look at the, she's walking in this highly magnified fault or mine and she's got this block that hangs over her head. This is called the hanging wall. And she's got the one where her feet are actually walking, that's called the foot wall. So the body of rock above the fault hangs over the miner's head, or the body of rock below the fault um, is actually um, where the feet rest. That's the, how we get the terminology. And you can see this one also. Um, the, this person is hanging from this wall, the hanging wall. This person is using their feet to climb this one, which is the foot wall. Okay, if we think about the same thing here, this would be the foot wall. This would be the hanging wall. And if you think about the hanging wall like a ball, it's a normal motion for this to go downhill. And this is going to be a terminology we're going to use for faults. Hanging wall, normal going downhill. Hanging wall moving up, that is not normal. It's abnormal or with the reverse of normal. So let's talk about the faults. I'm going to show you stagnant views of them first, then I'll show you an, uh, an animation. Okay, if you look at these forces, this is a divergent force. Div 
divergent force. We're pulling the two plates apart. Um, things like mid-ocean ridges where we get these is where we find this normal faulting. Uh, if you look at the hanging wall versus the foot wall, and actually if you identify the foot wall you don't have to think about it anymore. It all has to do with the hanging walls doing. Hanging wall, ball on the wall, on the foot wall, it's normal for it to go down. This is a normal fault. And I'm going to pick a color that's not quite as black as what it, uh, you're seeing. Okay, here we have the same thing. Hanging wall, foot wall, and again, don't have to worry about the foot wall. What's the hanging wall doing? Hanging wall is moving up. That makes this a reverse fault. Um, it's caused by compression or convergence. It is a compression force because we're pushing the two plates together. So I'm also going to write just like on this one, same thing as tension. We call it divergence in plate tectonics, but you really call it tension and compression in terms of uh, earthquakes. We can get a very low angled reverse fault, which we call a thrust fault, where one plate's being thrust right over the top of the other. It still is convergence, it still is compression, um, still is a reverse fault, but it's a special type. And the last type of fault, um, actually these two right here, these are um, caused by shearing forces or transform faulting. Let me go back to this one. Where we find this one, um, like mid-ocean ridges, divergent areas, this is deep ocean trenches, convergent areas, where you can see this actually goes down quite deep. These we find um, on the mid-ocean ridges, where the mid-ocean ridge comes down and you see it zigzag the way it breaks, where this plate is being pushed this way, this plate's being pushed that way, and right along this line, between these two lines, this is the transform faulting. So transform fault thing goes right along there. Okay, if you take a look at it and you imagine you standing here and you imagine a pine tree on this other side and the earthquake happens, which way did this earth which way did that pine tree go? It goes to your left. If you imagine the pine tree looking at you, which way did you go? You went to the left. So this is a left lateral strike slip. Strike actually means that the plate is sitting about here about 90 degrees. And on this side you imagine yourself standing right here and on this other side we have a uh, we have a wall to a house. Okay, so we have the house, and after this earthquake, we look at it, and that house actually moves to the right. Somebody's standing in the window, looking out, and they would see this green guy moving to their right. This is a right lateral strike slip, straight up and down fault. Okay, so the page I want to show you today looks like this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over a tad so we can look at the whole fault. And what you see here is we have a fault a foot block and we have the hanging wall. You can imagine yourself standing right here. This is the one hanging above your head. This is the one below your feet. This is the fault trace. Um, right now the fault's not that obvious. If you're standing up here at the surface, you may not even see it with uh, breaking down of rock and sedimentation, and deposition. Um, it may cover that fault. But what we get to do with this one is I get to push play. And if you take a look at it, we're pulling these two plates apart, this hanging wall moves down, which is normal motion, and then we're actually aging the rock, and anytime we get younger rock at the same level as older rock, this is a normal fault. So this is normal. If I go over to the next one, same thing, foot block, hanging wall, fault trace, push play, this time we're pushing them together, compression, which takes the hanging wall and moves it up. This is a reverse fault. Again, lots of erosion, weathering and erosion, and now we actually have older rock sitting on top of younger rock. That's a reverse fault. And remember, we could have that thrust fault where it gets pushed over at a very low angle.
and the last one. Um, this is a straight slip fault or a uh, um, lateral fault because we're going to get uh, motion. Now we only get one direction on here. I can't change it from the right to the left or vice versa. So I'm just going to push play and we'll figure out which one it is. Okay, you're standing here. This is a left lateral fault. So it's caused by shearing forces like in a scissors. So those are the three types of fault. One caused by tension, the normal fault. One caused by compression, the reverse fault. One caused by shearing, the uh, transform fault. In this case, strike slip because it's straight up and down. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.